Hey guys, it's Peter, and I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. Let's get right into this video. I've recorded it like four times. I keep on stopping it, I don't know why. I keep on saying things, and I'm like, do I really wanna put that out there? I, it's just, it's so stupid, you guys. And I just need to be me, and I just need to be genuine, and if people like it, they like it, and if people don't, they don't, and it, it is what it is, okay? And I'm not a phony, and I'm not gonna be one. So, let's just get right into this. This is my coming out story. The sound in the background is uh, Pee Pee getting his uh, good dinner on. But anyway, I um, wasn't going to do a coming out video. I have had so many requests for it in the last like week. I actually, when I started this channel, I did a video about some YouTubers that did fake coming out videos and how repulsed I was by it. You can go back and look at it if you want. I think it's called coming out story or something. But anyway, um... So I wasn't going to do this video, and then um, I'd be kind of come, become friendly, friends, I don't know, with Zach from The Adventures of Zach and B. I love him so much. I think he is such an inspiration, and for years I have recommended his video, not for years, he's been around for like a year. I, for the last year, I've recommended his videos um, to a lot of kids that are coming out that relate to him, and um, it's really helped a lot of people. And so I was talking to him, and I, I told him that, and he said... Um, well, I watched Mark Miller's video, coming out video, and it really helped me. And so I encourage people to do coming out videos because if you can help somebody, why wouldn't you do that? And it really got my wheels turning last night. I thought, I'm 44. I came out when I was 18. I mean, who's going to really relate to that story? But there are pieces of it that maybe are relatable. And so I don't know if, if nothing else, you learned something about me or if somebody is helped by it or... Um, you know, I don't know if, if there's something relatable in my story that doesn't even have to do with coming out, maybe somebody can be helped a little bit along the way. So I thought, you know, I'll tell my coming out story, which is very similar to Charles Gross's. And you know, he and I are very much alike. I love Charles so much. You guys, I talk about him on my channel all the time. If you go watch his video where he talks about his coming out story, he's like, I came out, my parents were like, we love you. And that was it. Um, my story is very similar to that. But the more I was thinking about it, I was like, it's not so much the coming out that's important. It's what led up to that and what I had to endure um, that has really made me who I am today and made me um, a proud gay man and has made me proud of my voice and has made me proud to sit in front of a camera, you know, unedited and be who I want to be. And it's that journey that has made me who I am today. And um, I'm not going to say that I don't get my feelings hurt when I get comments in the comment section. I still do. I'm not going to lie about it. Um, you know, I can read 100 comments and the one nasty one is the one that sticks with me. But it's, and it's usually the ones about my voice, even though I've kind of come to terms with my voice, that hurt the most because it's like, I can't do anything about my voice. I've wanted to shout that to people for like 44 years. Seriously, I just want to say... I don't know why I sound the way that I do. I can't do anything about it. Do you not think that I would change it if I could? But today, at 44, I don't really think I would. It's, I mean, my voice is who I am. And 10 years ago, I was working with this woman, and she met me, and she started laughing when I started talking. And I go, what are you laughing at? I knew right away she was laughing at my voice. She goes, I love your voice. She goes, it is so fun. I go, fun? She goes, it's sexy. It's kind of fun. It's like rockly. I mean, she's like, I love your voice. I've never heard anybody like you. She goes, it is so unique. It makes you you. And it was weird when that happened because I've since then got like 10 or 20 response, like similar responses. And I'm just like, I'm not going to hate my voice. I'm just not. You know, like it is my voice. I can't change it. It is what it is. So anyway... Let's go back to when this all started. Um, my parents, my, ch my growing up, as a, my childhood, was very well structured by my parents who actually, incidentally, got separated when I was four or got five, separated when I was five and got divorced when I was eight. They had a very lengthy and very tragic divorce. Um, and I lived with my mom primarily, but I stayed with my dad like every Wednesday, every other weekend. And then he called me every morning, every night. He was very involved with my childhood. My dad and I are still super, super close today. If you don't watch my other videos, my mom passed away eight years ago and I'm an only child. Um, my dad is like, we look very similar. Um, he is about 6'3", I think, and very masculine, very muscular, and one of the most affectionate guys in the entire world and could give no shits that I am gay and never has. I come in the door, he gives me a huge hug and gives me a, a kiss on the cheek. He's the same way to my husband. Um, he just doesn't care. And, he, and never, never, never has he ever 
questioned his own sexuality or been threatened by other people thinking that he has an issue with his sexuality. And we've talked about it on many occasions. So anyway, he's just such a cool guy, like very uh, conservative, but at the same time, like liberal on issues. My mother was very uh, liberal and liberal on issues. So I get the best of both worlds. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, so let's flash forward to I had this wonderful childhood. Um, my parents deliberately picked a school system for me that I would go to kindergarten all the way through my senior year. They wanted me to go to the, grow up with the same people and make friends. And um, in retrospect, that was not a good thing. Um, but they didn't know what they were doing. And they never knew what had happened to me my entire 12 years of school. Um, I never told them. I never wanted them to know. And I was very protective of my parents growing up, of my bullying that I um, went through. So kindergarten, I meet all these people. And I have friends. And I'm going to sleepovers. And I'm doing, you know, birthday parties with all these boys mostly. Because that's, you know, boys stay with boys. Girls stay with boys. That kind of stuff. Um, we also, it was very deliberate for my parents that we went to an inner city church because they wanted me to experience a lot of diversity, um, socioeconomically, racially, um, ethnically, gender wise, age wise, everything. They were just like, okay, this is, you know, we want Peter to be exposed to all kinds of different worlds. And I'm very, very thankful of that today. Um, I think I'm not a super religious person. I'm very spiritual, but had I not grown up in that world, um, and the church that I went to was very accepting. They were actually one of the ch first churches in Indianapolis um, to have no issues with gay men and lesbians and bisexual people in their church. So, which we act like today that's such a, why wouldn't they? But back then it was a big deal. And I'm talking 20 years ago. Okay, so I go to first grade. I'm in school. And do you remember those fall days where they like, they turn the cafeteria or they turn the gym into a cafeteria and they fold down the tables and you walk in and you don't go through the line. And instead you like, it's because they have tomato soup and they don't want anybody to spill it and get burnt. So it's all sitting on the table, the peanut butter sandwich. So we all sit down and I'm at my table with all my friends that were boys and we're sitting there and I'm like the last one to sit down. And they're all laughing. And the kid across from me reaches up for his milk to start drinking it. And the kid right next to me goes, don't drink your milk. And they all start laughing. And he's like, why? And he goes, it's homogenous. And he points to the word homogenous in the milk carton. He's like, if you drink it like Peter, it'll make you gay. Peter's gay. From that moment on, I was gay, homo, faggot, whatever word they could come up with, that was me. Okay? And I didn't even know what happened. And I'll tell you what hurts the most is that somebody realized, many people realized, something about me before I even saw the truth in myself. I didn't know in first grade that I was gay. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know, I, I, I had no clue what that meant. You know, I knew that the way they were talking about it was something that I didn't want to be, which then put into this shame and this negativity into it. So junior or elementary school goes on and um, I have very few friends. And I think it's interesting when we talk about guys that grow up with like effeminate voices and effeminate acting, and I was. I mean, nobody, everybody growing up called me gay. Um, even though I didn't know that I was or what that meant. Um, it didn't really happen to me till about fourth grade. And it was actually a coach of a soccer team that was older that I kind of got a crush on. I didn't know at the time that it was a crush. I just kind of wondered about him. Like, what does he do when he's at home at night? And, you know, what, what does his bedroom look like? He was like a, a high school kid. And um, it, it just very strange wonderings about him. And I always tell people today, like, being gay is not just wanting to lay in a bed and having sex with somebody. Being gay is like wanting to go to the movie theater and hold their hand. I mean, it's an emotional issue, okay? It's not just a sexual thing. And people get very confused about that. At least in my experience, that's what it's been. So anyway, that crush happened. It kind of screwed with my head. But I think one of the things is that kids that grow up gay where everybody else is calling them gay um, and they're effeminate, I think like they always gravitate towards girls. And I always say all my friends were girls. Surprise. But I think it's because boys don't want anything to do with you. And so who do you turn to? You turn to girls, right? And girls were very accepting of me. And it was a lot of fun, obviously. And, um, but there were some mean girls that were like, why are you trying to be like a girl? So anyway, that happened. You know, junior high happened. I was just bullied relentlessly all the way through, you guys. It was just horrible. I mean, I can't even tell you. My car was fucked with. People put on my car fag and red paint. Um, my locker was destroyed on a daily basis. I mean, in high school, it was horrific. People pushed me down the hallway. People pushed me downstairs. One of the worst things was I had this kid that was a bully. We've made up now. I, I believe in bullies and bull people that are bullied 
coming together and resolving through forgiveness and love, I think it's really easy to do and we need to move past it. Um, I don't want that resentment and that anger in my life today. So he and I have made up and he was just a really cool guy about the whole thing. I actually put a note on Facebook talking about I was afraid to go to graduate from high school because I was afraid that when I walked across the line, a bunch of people would yell faggot and my mom would know that I was gay and I didn't want her to have to go through what I went through every day in high school. And he knew I was talking about him and his friends and he sent me a direct message and we went and had coffee. And ever since then, it's been really nice. But anyway... Um, high school was hell for me. And what he did was he would come up to my lunch table and he would say things like, Peter, I'm gay too. Let's come over to my house and we'll uh, have a date tonight. And he would like make fun of my voice and do all this kind of stuff. And they do this and do this when I walk down the hallway. I mean, I just got chills down my back thinking about it. I mean, it was cruel. It's so cruel, you guys. And, um, my friends, which were all girls, tough girls, punk rockers, I mean, to tell you, my friend Shell, I mean, she had my back. She pushed this one football player straight down the stairs one time. Anyway, I even had a teacher one time. I went up to ask her for help in a study hall. She was a lesbian, I found out later, too, which I think is so sick. Um, I just got water all over my face. Like bad porn, I always say. I went up to her um, to ask her for help in this math thing, and she had two football players sitting on her desk because she was a softball coach. And I went up to her and I said, um, yeah, I need help with this or whatever. And she goes, go back to your seat and work on it. And I was so embarrassed. I like turned and I walked away. I was very quiet in high school. I walked away. And under her breath, when I turned and I walked away, she said, a fag. And they laughed. And I turned back and I looked at her and I go, what did you say to me? And she goes, I didn't say anything. I said, you, you called me a fag. And she goes, did you just use that word in here? I, I got in trouble for it. I did. Let me just tell you, my dad was so thrown out by that. He came to the high school and he talked to the principal. He said, if my kid is ever fucked with again in this school, he was like, it's going to be a new day for your school. Let me just tell you right now. I mean, it was horrible. I got moved out of that class and everything. But anyway, so the more that high school went on, I had a girlfriend, you guys, in high school. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Flash forward a year. She came out. She's a lesbian. So cute. She's got a girlfriend she's been with for like 20 plus years. They adopted a baby. A just very sweet girl. But anyway, I don't know that I really knew that. I, okay, I never knew that I could be gay out, be married, have a husband and a house. I mean, I just didn't think that was realistic for me. I thought I would have to live in the closet forever. Like, seriously, I thought, I'm never going to be able to do this. And so I, I started telling people, like, I was asexual. Not the meaning today, but back then that I just would never have sex with people. I was scared of it. I got these crushes on guys left and right. But I didn't want to call them crushes. So I would just tell my friends, oh, I just wonder about him. I just wonder what happens. And it's so funny because one of my friends said to me like years ago, she said, we all knew you were gay in high school. And I said, why didn't you say something? She goes, because we didn't want to make you uh, upset. And I was like, that would have helped. Like if one of my friends had said to me like, hey, I don't care. But if you are, let's talk about it. You know, like, and that's not their responsibility. But I didn't feel like I had anybody to talk to. I mean, this is 1990, you guys. If I had come out, my ass would have been beat. Beat down. I would have been... I mean, it, I would not have come home from school. So I graduated from high school and I'll never forget walking across that stage and I looked out and I saw that kid that was my bully and I thought, fuck him. That's exactly what I thought. And I thought, I'm coming out this summer. I was done. I, I was done. And I went and got a fake ID and I started going out to gay bars, but I didn't even then say that I was gay. Like I went out with all my girlfriends, but I wasn't gay. And so I remember um, I was over at my dad's house one day and he goes, hey, Pete, come into the kitchen. Debbie and I, that's my stepmom, want to talk to you for a second. And I sat down and he goes, um, we want to ask you a question. Oh, I was getting my hair cut by the person that cut my stepmom's hair, stepmom's hair, and he had seen me out at some of these bars. So he said, you know, Sean saw you out, blah, 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 whatever. We want to ask you, are you gay? And I was like, oh, shit. I was like, yeah, I am. And he goes, Pete, that's fine. I know what it knew you were. I believe it's genetic. I believe you're born gay. I've always known you were. Gave me a hug. They love me unconditionally. It's been awesome ever since then. My aunt, when I got married, I said to her, you know, Aunt Kathy, I mean, this is, is this the, you know, telling, explaining to her about being, going same-sex marriage in Vegas. And she's like, do you think this is the first gay marriage or gay wedding I've ever been to? She's like, Peter, please. But anyway, and then I went to my mom and I told my mom and I told her I was bisexual first. And she's like, Peter, you're gay. I know you are. And she started crying and I said, why are you crying? And she goes, I'm scared for you. You know, this was the era of AIDS. And I said to her, I'm not going to get AIDS. And she goes, I'm not worried about that. If you get AIDS, we'll deal with it. She said, what I'm afraid of is that people will treat you cruel. People are not nice to gay people in society. And she goes, I'm afraid of what's going to happen to you. And they said, mom, people haven't been very nice to me for a very long time. And she started crying. She goes, tell me who they are. I'll call their parents up. 
But my coming out experience, you guys, after that was just awesome. My friends were cool. I don't even really remember coming out to them. I started dating guys like that. I was making up for lost time. My parents were awesome. My family was awesome. I brought all my boyfriends around. I always have. My family was at my wedding. My husband's family was at his wedding. I mean, at our wedding. It's just been awesome. My coming out experience has been great. I encourage anybody to do it, to do it when they're ready. I don't think you do it until you are ready. And that is determined by you, not by anybody else. Watch these coming out videos on YouTube. Find one that you relate to. Listen to their experience and then make the decision for yourself. It's liberating. It's been the best thing I've ever done in my entire life besides getting sober. And I think that me not being like okay with me being gay had a lot to do with my addiction. But I will save that for another video. So I hope that was helpful to one person. If you have any questions about it, leave in the comment section or email me or something. Follow me on all my social media. And I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.